Welcome to track number three of the Message of Sacrifice. Number one, sacrifices are stopped, comma, taken away, comma, opposed by the Antichrist or anyone like the Antichrist. Should I say that again? I'll say it again. Sacrifices are taken away or are stopped, comma, taken away, comma, and what? Opposed by who? The Antichrist or anyone like him. How many want to be like the Antichrist? Turn with me to Daniel chapter chapter what? 8. Are you there? Are you still around? Chapter 8. Are you there? Let's look at verse 7. Now, now look at me everyone. This is talking about the Antichrist. Okay? Notice. And I saw him come close to the ram. This is a sort of pictorial description of the Antichrist. And he was moving with collar against him and smote the ram and break his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him. But he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore the he goat waxed very great. And when he was very strong, the great horn was broken. And for it came up four notable ones towards the four winds of heaven. Now this speaks of Alexander the Great. When he died, his four generals took over his uh, work. All right? And he's described as a goat because he was very fast and rapid in his conquest. And his uh, military uh, victories were very rapid, one after the other. He moved very fast from place to place. Then he died. Now verse 9 speaks about the continuation of this man into the Antichrist, one of the uh, goats, one of the horns. It says, And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. Now this speaks of probably of believers. And it cast down some of the hosts and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. But eleven, Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. Who is the prince of the host? Probably speaking about Jesus. Because you see before, he talks about the host of heaven. In verse 11. The host is the host of heaven. Alright. And in verse 11 it says, Yea, he magnified himself even to magnify himself to the host of heaven. Are you there? Let me just check. Uh, I want to, 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 to. Yeah, okay. My, my Bible says in the margin, he magnified himself against the host of heaven or against Christ or God or whoever. All right. And by him, the daily what? Sacrifice was taken away. And the place of his sanctuary was cut down. And an host was given him against, against what? The daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground. And it practiced and prospered. Then I heard one saint speaking. And another saint said unto that certain saint which speak. How long shall the vision be concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation? To give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden under foot. And he said unto me, unto two thousand and three hundred days. Amen. Two thousand and three hundred days. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Hallelujah. Now... Ladies and gentlemen, are you are you are you with me? Are you with me? 
2,000 and what? 300 days. How many years is that? How many days in a year? 365 times 7 is how much? 2,000 and something. Anyway, well, notice that the entrance of the Antichrist, okay, if this is the Antichrist, but even if it's not the Antichrist, it's a very bad test. Is marked by something which keeps repeating itself that he stops the sacrifices that are made to God. He stops it. He's against it. He prevents it. Look, this thing, eh, when God showed it to me in London, because I was in London and the Lord spoke to me, preach about sacrifice. And I said, wow, what is in sacrifice? I don't know anything about sacrifice. And that was in the afternoon, I had to preach in the evening. And suddenly the Lord showed me all these things and I was amazed. And when I realized that it is the anti-God, 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 anti-Christ, that prevents and stops people from making sacrifices to God. I said, man, I know where this thing is coming from. And suddenly I became confident. And I realized, because you see, even as a bishop of a church, and sometimes like a father to many people, sometimes I have to say to one, go, and to another one, do this. And many people will do what I, I, I would tell them to do. And sometimes it's very difficult. You see, if you are a general in an army and you are sending people, you know that some of them are going to die. It's just not easy. When Elijah, when Elijah called Elijah and threw his mantle on him, Elijah came and asked, can I please sacrifice my oxen? And go and say bye-bye to my father. He said, go and do it. What have I done to you? The question is, what bad? I mean, he felt so bad about having called Elisha. You understand what I'm saying? He said, what have I done to you? Go on and say bye-bye to the people. What have I done to you? I know what I have called you to come in to do. Are you listening to me? And I realized that it is against God, against God, against God, against God. Anti-Christ. anti God, anti-Christ is anti-sacrifice. Look at me. I've sacrificed my reputation, my future, the best years of my life. You see, I'm getting to the point, I'm, I'm almost 50 now. At a point, people will no longer be ready to employ me. Because as I said, above, above I said, there are many jobs they ask for your age. Why do you think they ask for date of birth? At a certain point, your gray cells can no longer function the way they were functioning before. You can't learn like the way you learned before. You cannot grasp things. You cannot bend. You cannot flow. You are not as bendable and as flexible as others are. So they ask, and there are certain jobs above the age of 30, they are not prepared to employ you. It's very, very real. It's not so easy to learn new things and to bend and to be flexible and to flow. I've given the best of my years and of my life. My best years are going by. The strength of my life, this is it. My future, my career as a doctor. Brother and sister, I had plans to come to America and I made plans. In fact, even before I finished school, I prepared various documents. See, there are some things that I don't always say. I prepared various documentation. I've done certain moves. To make sure that when I finish school, I'm moving. I was finishing school in, in, uh, in March. I finished school on the 10th of March. Medical school. 10th of March. And before the 10th of March, I had made various... I, mean, I knew who I was going to marry. I had made arrangements of how I was going to move with her. I, did, I had made various moves. Before I finished school, I was getting ready to leave. I've sacrificed my reputation amongst the people in the world. People see me sometimes as a thief. So, there's a pastor. What are pastors? Pastors have pastors are you see the high ranking jobs with good reputation. The highest job with a good reputation is our Supreme Court judges. And then after that doctors. Right, and among the lowest, you get it, are politicians. <laughs> and then also, uh, along the very low rank, are some of the charismatic 
pastors and the new pastors and, and so on that are around, they have a very low ranking and rating. And so I have left the high up there to come down, you get it, and people see me. My, my, my son went to school the other day, and one child said, your father is a thief. And my, my son came to uh, ask my wife whether daddy was a thief, because somebody in the school said that I was a thief. You understand what I'm saying? That is a, a child. And who was this child? The child, the son of a politician. And I said to myself, who is the thief? <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm saying? And all these things have been set aside so that we can... Now, the step into that great breakthrough of Lighthouse Chapel in Canada. How many believe that Lighthouse is a, an important church that has come to... I say, that is doing something important. Yeah. But the step to that was to make a sacrifice of my life. Now, in other words, to stop that church from coming into existence, all I have to do is to stop the sacrifice. And so that is why the Antichrist is anti-church. And Antichrist is anti-sacrifice. And that is why now I am confident when I'm sending people to sacrifice their lives. Now I don't have that because I know what is against it and who is against it. 